Hello and welcome to today's tech tip. Um, for the tip today, I'm going to show you how to make groups in Canvas where students can self-assign to those groups and collaborate on projects. And so I know with distance learning, uh, collaboration is one of the uh, strategies that we are trying to make work and trying to make efficient and using Canvas and making groups and having students self-assign into those groups uh, we feel like is one of the best ways to make that happen. So in order to make groups, there's a few things you have to do first. First thing is that you're going to obviously choose the class that you would like to make the group in. So I'll choose my English 10 group here. Once you've cho chosen your group, you're going to go to the people tab on the left. And once you have this set up, you're going to go to add group set. And so this is how you're going to label these groups. This is kind of like the big umbrella for where the groups are going to sit. So let's say I have a quarter one presentation group, presentation groups. So for all of my English 10 classes, I'm going to divide them up by section and within that section they're going to have uh, presentation groups that they're going to present on together and so once you have the heading there created you can go ahead and do self sign up you can manually assign students to groups so if you have like a seating chart you can manually put them according to the seating chart but since it's distance learning um, the self assign option is probably the easiest way to go with that um, i would also require want to require group members to be in the same section so that only my first period students can choose from other first period students and second can only choose second and so on. Uh, the next step is to look at the group structure and so if you know how many groups you want in your uh, to be in each period you can set it up already and so for my class um, if I have four periods of English 10 and I want to have 10 groups for each period, um, I'm going to choose create 40 groups now. And I'm going to limit each group to four. And so again, these could be whatever numbers you want them to be. But um, if I have 10 groups for each period, assuming you have upwards to 40, 40 students in a group, and you want to keep it to four members per group, you would do it like this. And then if you wanted to automatically assign a student group leader, I did this as well and just told the students after the fact that they're the leader. Um, you can randomly select students as a group leader or the first person to join. And I figured that the first person who wants to join a group is probably one that takes initiative anyway, so that could be a good way to start it. But once you have these group sets and all the settings created, go ahead and hit save. You'll notice now in my quarter one presentation groups, I now have uh, group one all the way down to group 40. And so if you're good with this, you can leave it like that, but I like to kind of make sure that students have a little bit more of a structure for how they assign groups to make it easier for me. And so I would rename mine period one. And I would do that all the way one through 10. And then when I get to group 11, I would do period two. I do that to 20 and then 21, I would do period three, just so that I have them sectioned off for them. And so my first period group can only be, she can only choose those from those periods there that are marked for me. Um, if something happens where you have a weird odd number of students, so let's say everything is filled up, but you actually have 41 students and a student needs to be in a group, they can choose, you could choose whichever group you want them to be in or whatever group they want to be in, hit edit, and you can just bump that up to one extra one. And so now group one has five students to accommodate that extra student. Um, and so we're going to show you now what it looks like from the student view when they go to self-assign into one of these groups.